simulating skin and organic tissue using polyurethane rubber. In this video, I'm going to be covering the use of F105. This is a skin-like polyurethane rubber that can be softened to varying degrees using the additive SC22. Now, in a previous tutorial, I did a similar process using platinum silicone. So if you missed that, I will be linking that on the end screen. Now, many of you may already be familiar with using polyurethane rubber materials or elastomers for prop making and prototyping applications, but there are times when a polyurethane skin is preferable to silicone, especially when you need to bond that polyurethane skin really well to a flexible foam material. So depending on the way the final part or prop will be constructed and what might need to stick to it later on, there are times when a polyurethane skin is preferable to a silicone skin. Now to begin, we're going to be using F105. And F105, as it comes, this is just a very soft, stretchy, 5 Shore A polyurethane rubber that mixes one-to-one -one by weight. Now, F105 is a translucent polyurethane that cures to a very soft Shore A5. And just as it comes out of the kit, you can pigment it with uh, polyurethane pigments. And it's going to cure to about a 5 Shore A in about 2 to 3 hours. Now, it can also be softened using the SC22 component. This is a softener that, when added to the F105, can drop it all the way down uh, past a 0030, as you'll see later in the video. Now, F105 is a fairly fast setting material. At room temperature, you'll have about a five to six minute working time and a two to three hour demold. Again, that's at about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, here's the little ear model that I just poured up with just the F105 mixed one to one. And you see that's a nice, pliable, soft ear model. But we can make that part even softer and stretchier with the addition of the SC22. And SC22 is a softening agent for polyurethanes. So mixed to a ratio of 1A to 1B to two parts SC22, we wind up with a very stretchy, very soft and supple ear model. So we can use this to create a lot of very realistic organic tissue and realistic skin effects. Again, really important in the universe of special effects and medical simulators. Now to begin, it's important to choose a compatible mold material anytime you're casting a skin material like this. And in this case for F105, because it is a polyurethane system, it is going to work best in a platinum silicone mold. So here's a little heart mold that I used in a previous video. This is made of TC5140 one-to-one platinum silicone. And I'm releasing that with E302 mold release. Now, like a lot of polyurethane materials like this, the part B needs to be shaken before each use. So just remember, anytime you're working with F105, make sure you shake up that part B really well before dispensing it. You want to get all that magic equally dispersed throughout that part B. Now, because this is a polyurethane system, you want to be very careful about that part A and make sure you only open that to dispense the material. And remember that polyurethane part A with the ISO, that's the component that can crystallize when exposed to humid air. So always a good idea to work in a climate controlled environment with low humidity. And now I'm going to pigment that using some polyurethane pigments. And for the curious, I used about a gram of cherry red and just a drop of the green to get that blood red color for my heart model. So just a little bit of that green. Thought you all might appreciate that information if you're simulating uh, blood or organic tissue, muscle tissue, anything vascular like that. That cherry red and just a little bit of the green really creates a nice looking blood color. And because it's the pigment and not the dye, it adds just enough opacity to get that nice organic look. Now remember, as soon as we add the part A to the part B, the clock starts ticking. And F105 has a five to six minute working time and about a two to three hour demold. Again, that's at room temperature. So now we're ready to fill up our mold. And this first heart that I'm going to pour here, this is just the straight F105 with no SC22. And I wanted to do this just so you can see how this part comes out with no special attention to it, just the straight 105 with nothing added. Now I didn't degas this, so those little champagne bubbles that came to the top there, I'm just gonna give it a quick blast of the E302 to break up those bubbles. And now we have our heart cast ready to cure. So in about two to three hours, I went ahead and let this sit for about two and a half hours. 
And again, this is 1A to 1B, and that's going to give us roughly a 5 shore A. And you'll see here, this is a, a nice soft part, but uh, not, not overly soft. So this would be a nice approximation of just regular human skin. Now the second part we're going to pour up, I'm going to make this softer by using 1A to 1B to one part SC22. And just for the uninitiated in the BJB line, SC just stands for single component. So anytime you see TC, that means two component, SC means single component. So again here, I'm mixing up my uh, parts A and B, and now I'm adding the SC22 to that. And again, we don't have to do this in any particular order. Sometimes I'll add the pigment to the A and B before I add the SC22. Uh, again, there's no uh, chemistry reason you would do it one way or the other. Sometimes it's just a matter of when I remember to put it in there. But again, I'm doing that same formula of red, about a gram or two of red, and then just a drop of the green to get that kind of blood red color. Now there was no need for it in this application, but you can vacuum degas this to get a completely bubble-free part, but this is already a very low viscosity material. So for this application, I'm just gonna pour this softened material right into that heart mold. And again, our, our demold time is typically about two to three hours at room temperature. Now I gave this a little bit more time because of that addition of the SC22. And this heart, when we pull it out of the mold, you'll see this is noticeably softer. This actually measured at a 0030. So the 00 scale is beneath the A scale, so softer than the A scale. So it dropped it significantly by doing that. But I'm going to pour up another one, and this one is actually going to be double that. So this time we're going to mix up our parts A and B of the F105, and this time I'm going to add double the amount of the SC22. So again, this is 1A to 1B to two parts SC22. Now when you start adding significant amounts of the SC22, it will change the working time a little bit, but not a whole lot. So just be prepared for that. You might want to give it a, a little bit extra time in the mold once you've cast your part. So again, this part is 1A to 1B to two parts SC22 by weight. Now at that ratio of 1A to 1B to two parts SC22, we're going to wind up with a really soft part. But the side effect to that, when we soften it that much, we wind up with a part that's slightly tacky to the touch. Much like when we cast a, a heavily softened silicone part, we're gonna have a little bit of a surface tack to that uh, polyurethane surface. So you see that even though we have a really soft, pliable heart, it does have a little bit of a tack to that surface. So there's going to be applications where you may want a part that's really soft like that, but much like organic tissue, might have a slightly firmer outside skin on the surface. So in order to simulate that, much like we did in the previous tutorial with silicone, we're going to create a membrane on the inside of the mold using just straight F105. So here I'm mixing up some F105, just one-to-one -one with no softener, no SC22. And I'm going to thicken that to a brushable paste using the Fiber Thick thickening agent. Now because Fiber Thick is non-reactive, you can add as little or as much as you need to to get the consistency you want. So it's a very user-friendly thickening agent and you can stir in a little bit like I'm doing here, check it, see how thick it is, and if it's not thick enough, you just add some more. So here I just kept adding a little bit at a time until I got the thixotropic quality that I wanted. And when you're doing this, just remember the working time, that five to six minute working time. Obviously you wanna thicken the material well within that working time so you still have enough time uh, to get this brushed out into the surface of the mold. So once I got this to the, the thickness that I wanted, I was going for something a little bit shy of like frosting. Now it's important to remember that even though this is non-reactive, the fiber thick, you can add too much of it. And all that's gonna happen when you do that is you just wind up with a mix that's like bread dough that's uh, almost unworkable just because of how thick it is. So real important to add it gradually and gradually bring it up to that thixotropic level you need it to be. And again, for this, I wanted something kind of like frosting, but with a little bit of a drip to it, just so it's more controllable on the inside of the mold. And now I'm using a disposable brush to spread that around the inside of the mold. And you want to really scrub the inside surface to get the uh, material into all the detail of the mold. 
And I say disposable brush because remember, brushes that come in contact with silicone or polyurethane like this, they are on a one-way trip to brush heaven. So just be prepared for that. And remember that it is much easier just to get a totally new brush than to try to clean these brushes out. Now what I'm doing here on the outside of that mold, the uh, flange on the outer rim of the mold, is I'm brushing that out to the edge there. And the reason I'm doing that is so that this layer, this membrane I'm brushing into the mold, will join with the kind of a cap layer that I'm going to pour on the back of the heart once I pour it in the softened layer. So I'm just carrying that out all the way to that edge just so that can all be joined together later on. And that also gives me a point to grab the rubber to help demold it later on. And that'll all make sense here in just a minute. So again, once I've applied that, now I'm ready to let that sit and gel. And it doesn't have to cure completely. In fact, we don't want this to set up completely. We just want it to set up enough that it's gelled to where we can pour more F105 behind it without disturbing that surface coat. So now I've mixed up a batch of 1A to 1B to two of the SC22. So again, that's the mix that gets it down to a double O20. So really soft, really pliable. And again, I can't stress enough, time is critical here. You wanna make sure that you don't let your skin that you brushed into the mold sit too long. Otherwise, this layer will have trouble bonding to it. So typical with polyurethanes to make sure you don't get delamination between layers. You wanna follow up the next layer as soon as possible to get a good bond between that first layer that you brushed in and the second layer that you're pouring in. So again, we're mixing that up with our, our polyurethane pigment. And I'm gonna pour that in just shy of the top of the mold. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap there around the edge of the mold, uh, about an eighth of an inch right up there at the top. And that's where I'm gonna cap this off with a batch of more F105 with no softener added. So this is again about uh, two hours later and it had gelled up enough that I was ready to cap that off. And now I'm gonna pour just a thin layer of more F105. Again, using the same color scheme and just pouring that on the back and letting that self level. And now you can see why that membrane was brushed all the way out to the edge, because that way I get a nice bond between the straight F105 that I brushed into the surface and the F105 that I poured on the back that joins it all together and completely encapsulates that heavily softened F105 inside. And of course we can easily trim that away with a razor knife or scissors. And now we have our finished heart. Now, if we want to, we can take that uh, heart because we put that encapsulating layer on it and we can paint that with some SC94. So real important, stick around at the end screen. I'm gonna link some real important videos about painting polyurethane rubber and pigmenting polyurethane rubber. And of course, the previous tutorial where I did this with silicone. So definitely check the end screen for that. And as always, I'll link to all of the products that I used in the video description. So check that out as well. And there you have the four different hearts I made in this video. We have the just regular straight F105. Then of course we have the version with the one to one to one ratio. That's the version that came out about a 0030. And then even softer by adding the two parts SC22, we wound up that really supple uh, soft 0020 heart. And then adding the membrane on the surface, we wind up with that surface membrane of straight 105 and then the very soft inside for a very realistic organic heart. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe and comment for the algorithm. And of course, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel.